Thank you for tuning in to another episode of WGC Fits. Today we are joined by Captain Center Strike. What's up? What's up? How are you doing, man? Good. How are you? Glad to have you. Yeah. So good to be here. It's great to be here. It's great day. Um, we got an interesting topic, okay. right? Are blades relevant in today's golf game? Right, all levels. That's good. We're That's talking good topic. club yeah. level all the way up to the pro level, yeah. right? Sure. So. I'll start and I'll say that, yes, I think blades are relevant, right? Not only do I think blades are relevant, I think that blades from a fitting perspective can really help us fine tune things, let's say in like a combo set or for players who are really trying to do things with trajectory and golf balls, right? Mm -hmm. it, it's there for a purpose, you know? Correct. Um, going all the way to the pro level, I know that a lot of the stuff that you'll see at the pro level is going to come from, again, those guys trying to really have predictable and controllable trajectories, mm -hmm. right? Um, what are your thoughts? Blade versus that modern players club, let's say, and we'll talk about what clubs we're comparing here in a second. So I got a couple instances where it's, I kind of bring up every now and then with that blade discussion. Mm -hmm. um, one was about Jordan Spieth. And mm -hmm. Jordan, this was, this was about six or seven years ago, he was the number one player in the world. Mm -hmm. um, Titus was launching new irons. They wanted their staffers to hit all the shots mm -hmm. or hit all the clubs, I'm sorry. And so they're going through all the golf clubs and, and Jordan gets the blade and he kind of looks at it. He's the number one player in the world right now. And he gets the blade and he goes, yeah, here, you can have this back. <laughs> and they kind of like, what? Show, they kind of laugh on? at him and yeah. go, what do you mean? He goes, I, I'm not good enough to hit this. Here, you can have <laughs> Best this Best player in the world at the time. Best player in the world at the time. Um, so that was one. Uh, the other instance came with Dustin Johnson and Dustin, mm -hmm. Taylor made went to the the fullest extent of this is when Dustin Johnson was number one player in the world. Mm -hmm. He went to the fullest extent of explaining to him how many shots he lost mm -hmm. by playing a blade. If he had played a cavity back golf club, he'd have hit it that much closer and won that much more money. And blah 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 blah. I actually remember that. Yeah. And that being said, he still plays blades. So mm -hmm. the the whole blade discussion versus cavity back, I, I think it's it's really it's a matter of personal preference. I agree. I think it's. I think it is relevant because I've had 20 handicappers that hit blades better than they hit cavity back irons. Mm -hmm. Handicap doesn't dictate no. what type of iron you should play. No, matter of fact, I probably hit, <laughs> at least in a fitting bay, I hit blades better than a cavity back just because I got to concentrate more. Mm -hmm. I actually have always thought that. A smaller club face, I do think really does help in that regard because so I you, do the same thing. So you kind of tone down the swing just a little bit and just you really concentrate on... Focus getting, on contact, focus right? Focus on contact. So, Let's talk about some of the differences here. Because okay. we have the Titleist MB sure. and the Titleist T100. Okay. Both clubs, tons and tons of presence across tours, tons and tons of presence across like your country club golfer, you know, mm -hmm. kind of setup, right? Sure. And especially when we get to that 100 window, some we actually use quite a bit from a fitting perspective, mm -hmm. right? Now, we had Captain Ball Speed hit these for us. So he is trying to swing I think around he should, 80%. He should switch the blades. I think he should, you know, for sure. Just maybe not. Maybe a little different setup, <laughs> but he uh, he's trying to swing around like eighty percent, right? So he's going at this 90, 90 miles an hour, roughly. Okay. Um, so not perfect for him, but still a relevant test. Mm -hmm. So we see here ninety three, eight thousand, one seventy one, eighty eight, right? Mm -hmm. Twenty point six in terms of the, the dynamic loft perspective. Mm -hmm. We see here roughly similar swing speed, a little bit less spin, a little bit more carry, relatively similar in terms of loft. Peak height, a little bit different, right? Mm -hmm. um, now, I guess before we dive into much more of the stats, let's really talk about the difference between these two clubs, right? Sure. The T100, modern player's cavity back, mm -hmm. relatively lower center of gravity compared to what a blade would be, but still not something that's like in a game improvement iron, right? Still gonna have meat behind the ball. Really there to really help on the miss hits that are gonna be kind of low and high on the face. That's how I would describe it, right? right. Mm -hmm. A little bit more perimeter kind of weighting and all that kind of stuff. Um, with the MB, center gravity is gonna be a little bit higher. Um, loft is a touch weaker in that club. Mm -hmm. um, sole a little bit more narrow, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Got to be a little bit more perfect. You you do have to be a little more perfect. And one of the things that Ian always mentions when he's hitting these is every time I give him a blade, he misses a little bit high on the face. That help, that hurts him, you uh -huh. know, because that's when the spin jumps up. And right. we have misses here across here. We have these two being a miss with the blade and then these two 
being a mess with the 100, mm -hmm. right? So you can definitely see a little bit of that help there with that perimeter. So, mm -hmm. I mean, add to that, what do you think differences really in these two clubs are? I mean, you touched on all the, touched on all of it. I mean, just that, that T100 has got, it's got the added tungsten in it that just makes it that much more forgiving mm -hmm. for that type of player. Yeah. That being said, at the end of the day, it's your golf club. So, yeah. You gotta like you gotta like you what better, you're looking at, man. Better like what you're looking at. That's I super mean, I've, important. and I've had I've had customers that, you know, they've they hit the T100 and they hit the blade and they just you know they can control T100 better. Mm -hmm. I mean, it just depends. It really depends on your strikes and where you hit the golf ball. I agree with um, that. Yeah. Me, I tend to hit it a little bit more towards the heel. That's why a blade is always going to be better for me than. Mm -hmm any cavity back iron yeah that being said standing if i if i'm playing in events and standing at 150 yards 160 70 80 yards slay the amount of forgiveness you can stand to look at yes. right <laughs> most important thing for the lack of how much i get to play yeah mm -hmm. that's um yeah that's it, almost like another part of this whole thing right is that really is probably what i would recommend most people to do is if you're a competitive golfer play the amount of help you can stand to look at right you know um that's just, often what a lot of guys at the higher levels do you know it really depends i mean look at all those guys and look I mean, at jason aside, day aside from he's a great example mm -hmm. you know jason day's playing he at one point played 770s i don't know what he's playing now but you know he always plays that little bit of a bigger cavity back profile just a little bit but, mm -hmm. you know then you look at shuffler and you look at tiger and you look at Rory and they're tiny. They're tiny. <laughs> um, I mean, Ricky, Ricky's probably the perfect example. Ricky played blades his entire That's true. professional career and just switched last year and kind of had a renaissance, so to speak, mm -hmm. hitting a little bit better, switched putters as well and got him, I mean, it got him relevant again. You, you got to get to the green before the putter comes out though, you Correct. know, so that's where Correct. the irons come out Correct. and he did make that change. So yeah, I would say relevant still. Yes. Yes. Not only relevant still, but something that people should really consider because mm -hmm. they can offer benefit, like I said, depending on what you're looking for. Sure. And if, if you had touched on a little bit earlier, but, you know, putting them in with a combo set, mm -hmm. you know, you blades are precise instruments. It's, I describe it to people as how, if I was painting a picture and I want a really fine brush mm -hmm. to, you know, make every paint stroke look mm -hmm. really perfect. Or would I want to pick a roller and mm -hmm. just roll it on there? Scalpel versus hammer. Correct. You know. So yeah, there's, and everyone's different. So you got to you got to make sure that you're, first and foremost, you've got to be comfortable with it. Biggest thing. And if you're not, then it shows. It shows it's, quickly. It's going to show quickly. <laughs> gonna blades show. are going to the misses are going to show up on blades if you are not confident in, in them. That is the one thing I will say about them. And I would yeah, I would tell people that you know if you want to get better that's it'll push you to get better i've always thought that as well either that or you'll quit because you it's a learning curve it's a learning curve boost right we'll say because <laughs> you're either going to get there or you're not uh-huh you know uh -huh. so i think i think we covered it okay anything else you want to add no i think we're good i think we did pretty good so thanks for tuning in guys please check out the next video we launch and uh, please like and subscribe we'll see you next yeah, time make sure you're subscribing see you guys see ya